This is the Blood Red Podcast from the Liverpool Echo. Hello and welcome to the latest Blood Red Podcast from the Liverpool Echo. It's Friday, the sun is shining and we're in the studio to talk all things Liverpool ahead of the big game against Arsenal tomorrow afternoon. I'm Joe Rimmer and I'm joined by three fine gentlemen on my right is the man with the most convoluted name in sports <laughs> journalism history. It's Theodore Sebastian Barnaby Squires. Hi, Joe. Hi, Theo. How are you? I'm good, thanks. I'm good, thanks. I'm good too. I, I brought up your name because there's to my left is a man whose name <laughs> offends you. I don't really know why, <laughs> but he's a man, and I really like this, I'm, I'm going to keep this going, okay. with the most pointless name in sports journalism history. Pointless nickname. Pointless nickname? DK. Is that it's more of an acronym than a nickname? Yeah, but the fact that it's shorter than mine, like my initials are longer than Dan's name. Well, if you haven't gathered now, it's Dan K. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even going to try and work that out. Do you know what my middle name is, Thea? It's Bernard. Go on, do what you will with that. Is it? <laughs> Bernard, yeah. yeah. That's a good one. What's, like your, what's your middle name? William. One's Christopher. Sorry? Name. Christopher. It's my middle oh. name. Yeah. Exclusives all over here. Mm. Well, Christopher on the end is mm. Ian Christopher Doyle. Correct. Yes, yeah. so it's been a long time <laughs> yeah. since somebody said that. <laughs> how, how are you? I am okay. Warm. It's warm, isn't it? It's sweaty as well. It is, it's nice. It's nice. We yeah, we're not going to complain. No, I'm not nice. complaining. I'm just we'll, you ask me we'll, a question and I answer it. We'll start with you, Ian, because um, <laughs> on this nice, warm day, you've been at Jürgen Klopp's press uh, conference. Yes. Um, he was quite animated today, spoke at length um, about various different topics. Can you fill us in? I can tell you what he said as well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, you can tell it's Friday afternoon. Maybe you uh, can get a sound effect for that. In, well, anyway. <laughs> anyway, anyway. <laughs> uh, to be honest, I, I know, yeah. Uh, I think Jurgen Klopp actually, he, to be honest, I thought he was very, I'm trying to think of the right word. He wasn't tense or anything, but he wasn't quite his normal jovial self. He's very businesslike, very brisk and businesslike, as I would actually explain him today. I think he just wanted to get on with it, crack on and you know get back to being football manager rather than speaking to us a lot, I think, really. Uh, but he did say one or two things. Uh, he, was, he spoke quite well on Alex, Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain. Obviously signed a new deal this week uh, to extend his Anfield commitment to 2023. And he's basically saying, I thought it was quite interesting that bit where he said that, look, the easiest, not the easiest thing, but he went through the whole of the rehab and he got himself fit, you know, over the injury, got himself what we'd call fit. But then he had to actually then increase his level further for what Jurgen Klopp regards as being fit in terms of being able to play and fit in his system. And he said that he thinks that Oxley chamberlain he found that more difficult. So certainly that was the most difficult part of the towards the end of his rehab because basically what he said is they treated him in the summer as a player rather than a player who's just come back from injury. So he was given the same drills, more or less the same drills. Obviously, it's like difference in terms of after games, he was given a, a, a different programme, certainly in America. But then after that, it was like, come on, you're just a player now. You have to prove that you're in the team, which is, you look at what happened in the Super Cup. He gave him the start. He wasn't very good. Subbed him at half time. Gave him another chance against Southampton. And he came through. And I know we'll talk about it a bit later on, but I think he might. He's got a chance of playing against Arsenal. Uh, all the stuff uh, Jürgen Klopp also spoke about the transfer window. Obviously, he was a, a big advocate of it closing before the start of the uh, Premier League season, and he got that. But unfortunately, no other country decided to do that. Now we're left with this situation whereby teams in Europe can have a look at all the Premier League teams and go, well, I'd quite fancy your player, and it can unsettle one or two. Liverpool haven't really been affected by this. I know Dejan Lovren is somebody who's one or two other clubs are looking at, but he's not been playing for Liverpool anyway. But uh, you know, Jürgen Klopp said... Yeah, perhaps we should review this. It was a good idea, but if nobody else is doing it, what's the point? So you can, you know, you agree with him on that score. Mentioned a little bit about Alison Becker as well and his injury. Didn't give too much away, but did suggest that, you know, the, he did say the crutches, uh, he's not on crutches anymore. He's eating he's, okay. He's eating okay, yeah. yeah he's eating okay, good. yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, he said he's in good shape, but I'd be amazed if we see him inside the next three or four weeks to be honest that's just a hunch can't see any no reason in rushing him and it's after international the, break as well yeah, yeah. After the and there's quite a lot of games coming up after that so I'd imagine it'll be around for some of them uh, what else Cater there was a minor Cater update which wasn't really we kind of knew he was out I'm not giving much away on Cater I get the feeling well it's Navi Cater isn't it he does have you know these injury problems which it's, it's weird isn't it it's, I always thought if you uh, talk about Manchester United for a second Alex Ferguson whenever he said somebody was out for four weeks I had the rule of divide by two minus one <laughs> which basically like they just put it out and say he's out for four weeks then like the next press conference he's actually out for two weeks and then he comes back a game early wherever the player was but with Liverpool it seems to be that they don't seem to give away anything and it it seems as though certain injuries drag for perhaps a yeah. little longer than, than you think whether or not they got the I'm not saying got the fingers burnt with, with Oxlade-Chamberlain because Klopp 
admitted he got a little bit carried away when he saw him back out train. I think it was back in February, wasn't it, when yeah. he when he, he first joined up with the team and he said, "Oh yeah, I'll be playing. He'll be playing by the end of the season." But you know, two minor sub appearances, and you could tell even at the start of the summer that he wasn't quite ready. But you know, he's he's caught up in the end. I just think Liverpool are just trying to be careful with Cater. Okay, well. I know there was something else that you picked up on that you found quite interesting in the yes. press conference. So I'll, I'll ask you a bit more about that. Klopp said it's the first time this season he's had mm. a full week to um, prepare his side. And he seemed to hint that he, he worked on a lot of tactical work with his team. Do you think that is with a, an eye on ironing out some of these issues, perhaps with, with the defence and this? And I'll say it in inverted commas because I don't think we're all convinced it is a high line. But no, I don't think that, it is, no. Perhaps an offside tra- mm. trap is, is, is a better way of referring to it. What what did you what did you learn from that? Well, it's kind of you know we we know how Jurgen Klopp likes to work and he loves his time on the on the at Melwood on the tr- the training pitch and going through tactics and going through certain routines there and the more successful Liverpool have come become under him the less chance he's had to do that because they're playing so many games and important games as well on top of that I um, mean look at the Champions League last season the season before the Champions League and then they had the season where they got to the Europa League final and the the League Cup uh, final as well so. You know, that's good in a way because obviously that means the success, but he doesn't get enough time. And I think this summer as well, with it being so bitty pre-season and he wasn't able to have many of his leading players until right at the very end, I think he partly treated, certainly the Man City game, you could argue a little bit the Chelsea game, they were almost like, not saying they were glorified friendlies, but that's where he tried some things out, such as Oxlade chamberlain on the left flank and bringing on a, a lot of players against Manchester City, gave, gave them an opportunity. But he's not been able to try that on the training ground, but that's what he's been doing this week. He did say that what Liverpool need to do is, you know, he said last season they started well in terms of results, but not in terms of their actual play. And I think people forget that. I mean, I, I was amongst the people writing saying, well, it doesn't seem quite right here. It was after the World Cup and it was when Firmino wasn't at his best. Certainly Salah wasn't. And Mane was the one who started the season well and he was kind of dragging the other two along with him. And there's been a little bit of that again. I mean, it's not, but this time it seems to be the defence that's that's suffering a little bit. So I think that's what he was looking at at, uh, at Melwood this week, going through one or two drills. He did mention that, you know, they were going through tactics and it's the first chance really since they came back for, from the summer that he's able to sit down with all of his squad for the best part of a week and go through things without having to fly here, there and everywhere or have a big game. And, well, no one's complaining about being in the Community Shield and the Super Cup. I think Klopp would be quite happy there was no game in midweek. OK, let's, let's allow some of the other lads to have um, <laughs> to, to join in on this podcast. Theo, yeah. Theo's actually stayed late, barely get to say a word. Right, Theo, um, we'll start with you then. We'll go back to Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain, uh, signed a new contract at Liverpool this week. Uh, Klopp spoke about him at length in that press conference. Um, first of all, you are banned from calling him the Ox or using any different way of saying that, so that includes Ox or... Any AOC? Uh, no, just call him Alex Oxide Chamberlain. It's not that difficult. I it's think his name. changes what he calls him um, every week. No, he calls him Ox. He's well, calling the Ox. It's, it's, and it's, he the Ox is all right call, for Jurgen Klopp. He called not him Alex. For he called him Alex today. Yeah. All right, okay, quieten down. I've banned it. Okay, it's banned. So Alex Oxide Chamberlain. Ox. Um, Alex Oxide Chamberlain <laughs> is is back. Um, he's played two games on the bounce, Theo. One of them, he, he didn't play particularly well on the wing, came off at half time. And in the second game against Southampton, his former club, he played quite well in midfield. Um, a, do you think he'll start against Arsenal? And B, where do you think, see him fitting in now? I know, I know we spoke a little bit the other day about Liverpool's midfield, and you think he'll be playing a fixture in Liverpool's midfield for years to come. Um, so you, have, you obviously rate him quite highly. Yeah, I think when Liverpool signed him, it was always that long-term option to replace James Milner as this versatile player, but someone who wants that chance in the middle of the pitch. Um, and with how he's come back, there was always that doubt of how quickly he can get back into the rhythm of things, as Klopp's discussed in this press conference today. But the fact that he's gone in against Southampton and put in such a good performance and virtually completed the 90 minutes after so long out, that was a testament to his abilities. Um, if he starts against Arsenal, I think you can say, yes, he's back. Like, how many players come back from such a long-term injury and play three games on the bounce in a week and get in a decent level of performance going there? But then with all these midfield options Liverpool have got, it's going to be rotation there. So Klopp can afford to give him a couple of games where he's going to be on the bench, not used as such. So he doesn't need to rush him, as he said today. But I think gradually he is going to be that fixture in the team just because Naby Keita, whilst when he was signed, you'd expect him to be that player. He's always had these injuries. He's never had the opportunity to really make the shirt his own. That's what Jane Bloom was doing before the injury. 
maybe that's what you can do again. Oxide Chamberlain. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Chamberlain. So, Dan, just you, before you go on, can I just actually note what's actually on your pad there? That, the letter's AOC. Hang on. Now, unless that's the Democrat politician, Alexandria <laughs> yeah. Ocasio-Cortez. <laughs> All right, show you, off. <laughs> you're a, a ten-ton hypocrite. I, I'm not, I'm not, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> Banks Because are right. that is just to remind me. That right, is, okay. That is short form to remind so me. one rule for Joe and one rule for everyone else, Look, basically. this is my podcast. This is my podcast. You quiet down and answer my questions. Dan, Alex oxlade Chamberlain, are you surprised that he started two games on the bounce? And if he starts against Arsenal, does that... Does that hint that perhaps he's he's more of a favourite of Klopp's than, than perhaps we realised? I don't think many people would have had him down as a regular starter no. at the start of the season. I'd be t- I would be a little surprised if he did start tomorrow, but I was very very pleased, and I think it was really really good management for him to start him at Southampton last weekend. As we all saw, he, he really did struggle in. Uh, Istanbul against Chelsea in the Super Cup, playing in, you know, in an unfamiliar role, basically on the, the flank of the front three, where generally he's you know, largely played in the, in the middle three. He struggled, he was hauled off after 45 minutes, um, and I did kind of have a little fear in my mind, mentally, how will he cope with that? How will he react to that? If he's left out, if he doesn't get any action for the next couple of weeks now, is that going to be a struggle for him? It was a big leap of faith, I think, for Klopp to put him straight back in at St Mary's and it paid off I mean you know, like like all the, the Liverpool players in the first half he really kind of struggled to make any impact but as the second half it been in the second half he had, he had he he played really really well I mean that first 20-25 minutes of the second half Liverpool were it's one of those dominant spells I think I've seen for a, for a long time in any match really Southampton literally could not get out their own half and he wasn't doing anything earth shattering in terms of great passes or shots but he just kept re- Keeping possession, keeping the pressure on them, recycling the ball really well. Um, I tell you, to answer to you, the, the last part of your question, I think probably maybe we maybe we have slightly underestimated just how much faith and regard uh, the manager has in this player. Because, like I say, to, to, to put it to put him in, I think there would have been a few eyebrows raised when that starting eleven for Southampton was named with him still in it. But it was vindicated by by his performance in the three points. Yep. Doyle, you hinted that you think he will start mm. tomorrow. Well, no, I said that I'd like to. Oh, so you? Yeah. Okay. Well, tell tell me a bit more why about why because again, he seems to be somebody that I think has come from nowhere really at the start of the season to almost playing playing two games. I don't think a lot of midfielders will start so many games on the bounce this season. They've got so many options. Yes and no. In terms of, I don't think it's a surprise. I really don't think it's a surprise. I mean, no. you have to bear in mind what position he was in how integral he'd become when he got injured. And I know Liverpool, since then, have signed, as we mentioned, Fabinho and, and, and Cater, and they're looking through the process of overhauling the midfield. But that could come from Oxley chamberlain or Ox or Alex or AOC or the Ox or however we want to call The England international, the 26-year-old, how we want to Don't call him. Don't mind any of that. Yeah, uh, how we call him. Yeah. Son of former England international. Yeah. Martin. Anyway, um, <laughs> it depends on what Klopp wants to do. But the point is, he's an option now, isn't he? I'm not surprised he's been playing that often uh, lately. I think, as I agree with Dan, I think it was a good shout, uh, man management to have him play against Southampton. It's even better that he lasted the full 80, well, 89 minutes. Uh, it didn't seem to have any side effects to that. didn't seem to bother him too much. And part of the reason I play him against Arsenal is because he's just signed a contract He'll be absolutely buzzing at the moment. Mm. He'll be up against a team where he'll be thinking, you know, not so much the point to prove, but, you know, these, these are my old team. I want to show that I made the right, right decision. Well, he's got a Champions League winner's medal for a start, but, you know, I made the right decision leaving them. And I think he'll be desperate to repay the faith that Klopp has shown in him. So I think Cater could be the big loser in the next couple of weeks simply because he's injured again. And it just the Oxley chamberlain Alex Ox, the Ox, the 26-year-old, what... You know, former it, Arsenal it, midfielder. Yeah, yeah. It's, I don't uh, mind any of that. I just, uh, <laughs> the th- Ox makes my skin crawl. I think it's an opportunity for him. And it's one that, if you look at his performance against Southampton and his old demeanour and his attitude and the words that Klopp is saying, it's one that he would appear to be primed to take advantage of. Could give uh, Anfield a boost as well because it'd be what, his first start at Anfield since he got the injury. When it's a top of the table clash under the lights, or ish under the lights, it's going to be an atmosphere, top of the table game. It's a real opportunity for him to go and make a statement. We saw last season with Cater and Fabinho when they were in sticky spells. Klopp stuck with them, gave them faith, and it took them a little while to find their feet. 
the fact that he's come back so quickly against Southampton and put in a good performance could be another way for him to build on that. OK, well, you both mentioned Keita, so let's just stick with him for a minute. It doesn't look like he's going to be playing in the next couple of weeks or so. Um, how unlucky has he been with injuries in terms of every single time he seems to have get himself in the team, run a games, he seems to get injured. Uh, towards the end of last season, he, he was playing well, gets injured, start this season. I suspect he'd have been starting where Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain is starting and gets injured. Theo, are we a little bit worried now about Nambi Keita? I mean, we've had a few worries last season. <laughs> you, you were massively are we worried, worried, weren't you? Are we worried all over again? <laughs> I think there's enough options there to not be worried about him, but he should never have gone to the Africa Cup of Nations. That was always a yeah. disaster waiting to happen. Like when you're rushing a player back, they're going to break down again. We've seen it time and time again with players over the years. Like we saw Firmino rush back for the final. He didn't play well in that. Harry Kane, same. And exactly. And there's always going to be that pressure on Keita. It's not as though he was rushed back where he's just another player. He is their star man, Guinea. And they didn't do particularly great with him there. Didn't even finish the tournament, did he? Came back after, what, two games? So it was completely pointless exercise. And then he's come back, got injured again. Like Guinea have sacked the manager at all this stuff. And you remember all the war of words they've had. Liverpool are the losers there, but they've got an option, enough options to get around it. And you think, well, when he's taken so long to settle with the club in the first place, he's still come to terms with the language and everything. The second season was when you wanted to see the best out of Naby Keita. And if we're going to be looking, what, two months into the season and then you're getting him going again, you might be able to say, oh, he's like a new signing, but it's catch up. I don't think it'll be a problem for Keita when he does come back. Do you not? No, I don't think it'll be a problem. I think he'll be able to go straight in there because he knows he's had the full year. He knows exactly what's expected of him. In terms of being... I don't think he's injury prone. I just think he's been a bit unlucky, as you mentioned. I think I, well, I did write a piece recently which actually pointed out, I can't remember the top of my head, I think he only missed eight games last year through injury. But they seem to be, they come at the wrong time. Well, that's the point. That, that's where the, so mis- that's where the well. yeah, that's where the misfortune is. It's because also he actually came off injured in a couple of games mm. and that always has more of an impact than somebody being injured in training like he was in uh, in Istanbul the other week because you know we were like oh, where's he going you know we, we see him and he, he didn't look happy yeah, yeah so it's 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 the times that he gets injured as well it always looks slightly worse than what it is but I mean how many games has he, he's only missed this will be three won't he so it's, if he misses Burnley then he's back it's, it's only four games that he's missed which isn't actually that much and in terms was, of for his Liverpool it, career it's a, it's a bad this is a bad time it's a bad time I, I but, that, but that's, that's the misfortune isn't it it, is, it, isn't, the fa- it isn't the fact that he's always, it isn't the fact that he's always injured it's the fact that he gets injured as we've just said at completely yeah. the wrong times yeah. for him to pick up on something Ian said just before Liverpool are in the process of kind of remodelling restructuring reconstituting their midfield and at a time when he should be jostling with others to make a claim to the manager to say I'm your man I'm the man that you should be building this new remodelled midfield around. Frustratingly, he keeps picking up these these niggles and knocks that's uh, preventing him from building up any kind of run of games. Um, so it, it, he, he could end up being the big loser, as he has said, because if Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain um, Good. continues Thanks. to play like well, right, <laughs> <laughs> continues to play well and, and kind of nails down a place in the team... Keita may well find himself struggling to, to, to get a look in. I mean, I say that, hopefully, realistically, Liverpool, Liverpool looking at a 60-game season, everybody's going to get some mm. football. I think the lad himself has got to be patient, the manager has to be patient, and the supporters have to be patient. I do agree, again, with Ian, in that I think he will be, he will benefit from last year, even though it was difficult for him. Um, you know, the, By all accounts, he's quite, he's quite, quite a quiet lad, quite introverted, mm-hmm. and I think it probably has taken him maybe longer than others to maybe settle and to kind of get a feel for the place and get used to his surroundings and his teammates and so on. I'm hopeful that it, it, it might be the second half of the season, but I, you know, even in that, that very, very brief little cameo at Wembley in the Charity Shield, I'm confident that there's there's some good things yet to come from him, but we might just have to wait a little bit longer to see it. OK, one man Liverpool will see at Anfield tomorrow is Nicolas Pepe. Liverpool fans were desperate to see him at Anfield all summer and they will get to see him in an Arsenal awesome shirt. Not all of them, not all of them. Many, Come on, let's just not, not, not all of them, Joe. Come on. I, I won't, OK, I won't tarnish them all Good. with the same Pepe brush. But but they were, a lot of fans were desperate to see him. So they're going to see him. Do you think Arsenal are set up as a team that can expose Liverpool if they're going to try and play this offside trap, Theo? Yes. Yes. Any worries? No. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, if the defence is on form, they can do it well. Like we were saying earlier in the week, um, they've 
done quite well with this offside trap. Like it stands out more because the flag doesn't go up until the end of play. So it, teams are getting in behind. We saw Chelsea score a couple of goals before the flag went up and disallowed them. But when have Liverpool, apart from the Norwich one, when have they really been properly penalised by teams getting in behind them? They're doing a good job at it, considering it's early in the season. And it's a new tactic. They're trying because to you argue they them. haven't played against anyone like Arsenal's front three. If if Pepe does play, I'd say Chelsea that far behind. Had a bit of pace, didn't they? Giroud, Man City are well, quite good, to be fair. <laughs> He's got a point. Quite quick. Sarnes quite quick. Sterling did score and then get him Has Pookie scored any goals this season? Oh, no. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you, you say, um, right, Giroud is, you know, some might say a bit of a car source. He's a player. That, that's, that's the point. He's, <laughs> he's got a great record against Liverpool, so believe me, I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not throwing him under the bus. But they've got, yeah, they've got um, Pulisic, Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I thought I thought caused co- us a lot of difficulties. You know, they've got they've got some quality up front, Chelsea, and so have Arsenal. Tomorrow, I'm I'm a little concerned about tomorrow. I, I'd, I'd be I'd be very surprised if we'll keep keep a clean sheet, and partly that is down to the fact that you know, and again, not wanting to kind of slag the lad, but we're not we're not we haven't got our regular back five, and you know, it's not just in terms of Allison being inarguably one of the greatest goalkeepers in the world. That understanding, particularly in the modern game, with High lines, low lines, you know, the back pass rule, the, the, the recycling yeah, of... The uh, back pass rule? How, how long do you want to go back? 1992 that was brought no. in. No, I wasn't but, even but, alive when that was uh, abolished. Shut up, <laughs> You weren't even alive to get lost. <laughs> oh, it's 92, wasn't it? It started 92, yeah. 93. I was born just before, what, second game of the 92, 93 season? Oh, oh dear. God. That's so um, impressive. <laughs> I can see... I can see the being 1902? <laughs> <laughs> Deep anyway, breath and you're, carry on. You're 1892, <laughs> so you laugh. I've been here for the entire duration of Liverpool's being, yeah. <laughs> I, I think Arsenal will come and have a go tomorrow because yeah, there's not a lot of expectation on them and they will probably sense a little bit of vulnerability around the Liverpool defence. We haven't looked as watertight as what we were last season and we're not going to be because, as, as I said in a pod previously in the week, I think it takes time to build up that rapport, that understanding, that kind of muscle memory of you know, when you all move up, when you all move across. Mm-hmm. It, it takes time. They'll get there. But we just might have to kind of take a few on the chin in the meantime and rely on our own abilities to cause other team troubles to make sure we get the wins we need if we are starting to concede one or two goals a game instead of zero goals a game, which is obviously what was what was happening most weeks last season with all the clean sheets we had. Well, that's one, that, well I was going to say, that's one thing that they've been working on this week. The goalkeeper yeah. and the defenders, they've yeah. had a chance to play together. So, yeah. so they'll be doing that. They'll be going through those drills, going through set pieces. You know, It, it gives them an opportunity to get to know each other a little bit better. While having already won a trophy, the advantage the defence has is they're all quite pacey. Like the fullbacks are quick. Van Dijk's not a slouch. Gomez has got a bit of pace in him. Like I think of goals where teams have sprung off side traps. The obvious one is United versus West Ham. You know when you got Bartes like a little schoolboy with his hand up. When De Cano's like just run <laughs> yeah, through. The FA Cup time, like yeah. Liverpool have not ended up like that. They're not going to end up like that. I did that. At, I, 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 did, that that I, did, I did that. I did that at six aside uh, once with <laughs> with Phil Kirkbride, and it worked. He just let the ball roll to me. <laughs> Yeah, so you're, you're, you're saying that you um, you sprung for not the offside, game. Not, not offside, side, but you know, offside where he put, you know where he puts his hand up to say like, oh, the game stopped. Well, I just did that and he just came straight. He was not happy. So you just okay, changed. Basically, basically yeah. yeah. Not the spirit of the game, that really. No, it's not. Not, no. not really, not really. They were though. <laughs> anyway, it's all right then. <laughs> Do you think that by pushing up the pitch though, Liverpool, we're talking about Liverpool's defence. We should really be talking about Arsenal's defence. They have real defensive issues, Theo. Um, and Liverpool have heard them so many times before. Do you think that they are ripe for the taking on, on Saturday? Yeah, I reckon they are. Liverpool's front three look really good at the moment. They've all come back in firing after playing in these international tournaments in the summer. All off the mark early. They're going to be hungry. They're going to want more goals. And Arsenal's defence, it's like, well, who even lines up in that defence at the moment? It's a young winger at fullback. David Luiz trying to find his feet. They're still trying to decide who's the partner there. Like Callum Chambers got relegated last season playing in midfield. Now he's a centre back again. Um, they've given up on Mustafi. Uh, the first choice left back they've signed from Celtic. He's injured, so they've got what Monreal there. It's, it's a mess of a defence. David Luiz always has a good game against Liverpool, though. I he find. does. He does. I think yeah. he quite enjoys playing Liverpool. Liverpool. That I don't think free free exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I think he'd make a big difference for them. Seriously, he's a strange I, one yeah. for Liverpool. Them, yeah, he's a strange one for Liverpool because I think 
the rest of the country has seen this mad defender who's not very good. And I think every time I've seen Luis play, he looks great. And I think, who is this man that everyone talks about who's who's erratic and crazy? But against Liverpool, he looks like he's got everything. He's pacey, he's quick, he, he's good in the air, he's commanded. Well, it's, it's funny how yeah. certain players, we mentioned Giroud, didn't we? He always, he always scores right, against Liverpool. Against there's, the there's always these players who just like playing against teams, which is like, Firmino will be lo- loving it. Good segue, yeah, yeah, segue. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm glad you said that because yeah. Roberto, Roberto, Bobby, Bobby, Bobby is Bobby, absolutely Bob, banned Bob, from this podcast. Bob Smith. I hate Bobby. What so about his favourite Bobby? name? If you've got all I know, he calls himself Bobby. I don't care. Has he got like Barbosa not, in there? He shouldn't be allowed. Is this because you don't like being called Joey? No, it's not. It's because <laughs> Joey. Bobby. It's because Bobby. I, I can I can tell you the origins of my Bobby dislike. I'd rather you it's didn't. because Too I always <laughs> I always remember Liverpool fans laughing at Everton for calling their manager Roberto Martinez Bobby Martinez Bobby Brown shoes and, yeah. and we laughed at them and then now all the pool fans call did we laugh for me? I don't yes. know did we laugh I remember the whole I don't. I certainly don't remember laughing no I, I just hate I've never laughed at anything he's a Brazilian lad we don't have to give him <laughs> an English name too young to be this angry Joe no, yeah. no I'm not you are. I'm, I'm, I'm 30 now I can be angry as well. 30 but, and the rest 31 <laughs> <laughs> but, but he's, he's a Brazilian lad we don't need to give him an English name but anyway Roberto Firmino enjoys <laughs> playing against Arsenal. You're going to write. This is all like about a therapy the session morning. for you. Isn't it? <laughs> it is sometimes. You're going to write all about him in the morning. You're, you're a big fan of him. Um, I am. Yes. What is it about Especially, Arsenal that, that he likes? Well, probably the fact that he can't defend might <laughs> certainly helps. Um, he got that trick, didn't he, last time out? Oh well, the, it was last game, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah last mm-hmm. time out. Yeah, the, I think the his five one. Field goals were against him in that three three. Three three, yeah, and he's he's got eight and eight. Um, so. He just, he just. I think it's just the way Arsenal play. They don't tend to. They can't you know, pick th- him up. Can they, they? Well, I was going to say they don't tend to be able to drop into midfield. When he when he drops deep, he just does what he wants. To be honest, and I think Arsenal, as Theo said, not the greatest defensively. Even if Louise might, as I say, it'll be interesting to see because obviously there's two Brazilians up against each other. It'll be mm-hmm. interesting to see what he, how he deals with it. Whether Louise just goes in and follows him around everywhere because there's every chance that could happen. But then that gives a bit more room for the for the other two. So, yeah, I think with for me, you know. Also, he's a man in form, isn't he? He's he's one that's started this season very, very strongly. You know, to see what he did when he came on substitute against Chelsea. We've spoke about that in a previous pod, but even the Southampton game, he just he looked on it. You know, he he missed that chance in the second half, but he didn't really let that bother him. Got himself a goal a little bit a little bit after that. And he's the the one player that probably at the moment Liverpool can ill afford to be without. Is he one of, if not the most unappreciated player in the Premier League? Done. I think he was until people started asking the question, is he one of the most unappreciated players in the Premier League? <laughs> um, <laughs> the, old, the old Gareth Barry. <laughs> um, <laughs> to be fair, I still, I still think he is. I still think if you asked many yeah. other opposition fans, you know, Liverpool's front three, they would say, oh, Salah, Salah and Mane, Mane agreed. But if they could get a better third man, I, think, I always think that. Yeah, you're not a million miles away. I, I think the more discerning football supporters would appreciate just what Firmino brings to his team, um, I don't know if he's if he's ever in the other time he's been at Liverpool if he's if he's been um, made the PFA team of the year yet. Um, I would be very surprised. Uh, well, well, maybe that says something something about the modern footballer. But but I would imagine that the the smart the smarter footballers would would appreciate a lot of the unsung work, the running that he does, the work off the ball. I always kind of think the sign of a really great players isn't just necessarily about what they do themselves. It's it's their appreciation of other players and how they bring others into play. And for me, he's superb at doing that. Um, so I, I, I'm really really pleased to see him looking close to back to his best after frustratingly uh, truncated end to last season with his injuries. Um, but he really seems to have hit the ground running. Got himself, you know, a very well taken goal at Southampton on Saturday, and I'm sure he'll be rubbing his hands together. Um, Looking forward to coming up against one of his favourite op- oppositions tomorrow. Eight, eight and eight. Eight and eight. I- yeah. Ian said, um, and yeah, Ars- it'll be very interesting to see how Arsenal try to cope with him, c- t- try to handle him because um, obviously he does have this knack of dropping deep. I mean, it seemed like halfway through last season he was dropping even deeper, yeah, than than he, than he was doing previously in his career. Seems you know, seems to have played a bit bit further forward since then. But I think that's perhaps part of his genius. He always keeps the opposition guessing. They never know quite what to expect from him, and uh, I think that's makes that's what makes him so difficult to play against. Theo, agree with that? Yeah, I suppose looking at the way Liverpool set up, and you think of like the PFA votes and that, 
Defenders remember being terrorised by quick attackers. Mm. If you're not really tracking Firmino, he's behind you, so you're not really seeing what he's doing, whereas you remember chasing after Mane and Salah. And when you think of like opposing fans, they'll probably argue that Salah's the one of Paul value most, and then Mane, and then Firmino. But I think Liverpool fans, it's the other way around. It's Firmino, Mane, and then Salah. Salah's probably the one you'd lose if you had to choose one. Hang on, we've been down this road. <laughs> <So> <laughs> let's not, not do that. that. <laughs> well, yes, otherwise we'll get accused of being Fenway lackeys. But again. yeah, I think um, Firmino's, it's going to be his year. Like Salah's had his year, Mane's had his. It's time for Firmino, Roberto Year Firmino. of the Bobby. Bobby, come on, come on. Be <laughs> oh, right, we'll move on. Um, <laughs> I like Such matches against. Isn't he? Yeah, I like matches against Arsenal. I don't know about you guys, but they're always good games. Arsenal for me. Arsenal in my have, lifetime. have only kept one. Uh, sorry, Arsenal have only failed to score once at Anfield since two thousand and six. All right, it's a, it's a good start. I'll Very throw good. one in as well. I think it's twenty five years this weekend since that um, since that incredible match when Robbie Fowler scored yep, a hat trick in four and a half minutes. It yep. was beaten eventually by Sadio Mane. Correct, Sadio Mane for Southern. Anyway, um, Can we call him Sadio. Is that, is that all right? Is that okay? Yes. Okay, yeah. Sam. You can. You can. You're, you're welcome to send me a list of names after this blood red. You should approve. Yeah. I will approve all of them. Um, I think we should start doing the full Brazilian names, like all four or five. Yeah, this podcast don't. Oh, you should. You know, we, they can't go on forever. <laughs> anyway, even though this one feels like it is. <laughs> no, it's, it's going to be finishing very soon if you just let me talk. Um, I like games against Arsenal. They tend to be very good games between Liverpool and Arsenal, and um, I also think that Arsenal. As, an, as a visiting side, have brought some of the best players to Anfield that I've seen in my lifetime. Um, Henri Bergkamp. Oh, Henri and Bergkamp. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> Caesar. One for, one for the grand there. Sig- Signan, is it? Baptista. Baptista. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Baptista. Ba- he's got four. Buried us in that league. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Six I remember thinking he's going to be Caesar's very, very good. So we throw an Arshavin in as well. Yeah. Arshavin, oh, yeah. don't. Yeah. Gus Caesar. That's um, one for the old people. Yeah. What was, Doyle, sorry, before we talk about Arsenal, cool. what was John Holding like in person? <laughs> <laughs> um, right, anyway, that's funny. Um, <laughs> what do you mean, Rob Holding? We'll be able to see, won't we? I want, it, I want to know. Injured, I'm going to go through. Injured. Quiet now. Another one wanna... of my friends, Rob Holding. Oh, is, is he? Yeah, yeah. Right, there you go. Yeah, I'm losing, <laughs> I think I'm losing control. Eh? It is much better when I, when I, I hosted it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's because you purposely jeopardised my podcast. I didn't realise it was yours. Yeah, it is now. Right, Theo, start with you. Favourite Arsenal memories and goals? Neil Mellor, it's the obvious one. Oh, that's my one. We shouldn't have asked me first then, you yeah, should have said yours. shouldn't have done. Go on. Yeah, Liverpool were a bit cack at the time. Arsenal were the Invincibles and Mellor just goes <laughs> and really buries one in for 30 yards. <laughs> cack. Yeah, it's not to <laughs> like. That was the season we ended up winning the European Cup, yeah. But they no, were. No, they were, yeah. <laughs> it they was were, a great team at the time. <laughs> at the, time. <laughs> the fact that Mellor was starting up front says it all. Neil Mellor. I think I'm adding cack to um, <laughs> the Ox and Bobby in the band, or, band words. Well, unlike you, I don't want to swear on the podcast. I want it to be aired in all countries. That was only twice. I got it taken out of Dubai. Of course, yeah, you, you swore, didn't you? <laughs> taken out of Middle East. I know, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> <Is> that <laughs> Middle East fans were denied that, that episode because of me swearing. Um, Dan, I will swear soon if you keep interrupting me, Doily. Arsenal and memories, you, <clears> you can go back a long way. Very hard to look past the the four minute Fowler hat trick. Yep. I, I, I was actually in what ended up being my season ticket seat, which is Upper, upper Kemlin, halfway between the halfway line and the Annie Road, then, so I had a perfect view of it. Um, I'd throw in there as well uh, the four nil just before Christmas in the treble year. Gerard banged yep. one yeah. in, Fowler scored Long late shot. on. Um, How many do you want? Oh, I've got you another one. Leave, you're going to leave none left for four me. Nil, four nil start last uh, 2017 19. Salah running through. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, and a, 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 a personal away memory as well. The, the 2-1 game at Highbury when uh, Robbie Fowler pleaded not to be given the penalty and oh, then yeah. perhaps messed it on purpose, but McAteer got the rebound. Doyle? The FA Cup final, 2001. Oh, oh my God, how did <laughs> I forget that? <laughs> I, was, I, I actually I could, did mean that field game. Did, so well, that's why I was asking, kind yeah. Of uh, Champions League. Champions League, 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 yeah. The um, the Mella game. Have you seen any one game with where every goal in it was such high quality? Mm. The the Vieira goal is it's brilliant. It's a brilliant move from Arsenal. Just, the Alonso goal is class as well. Alonso goal. Mella's like yeah. diagonal runs yeah. to open the space for him. It's yeah. brilliant. Anyone for the four all? No. 
that was just a, that was, that was a okay. good game good for the game. It was a good game, but, yeah. but we were flaking the league. Yeah. Yeah. So it was a bit we, were just, moment, we were really. just having to go for it by that point. That, at that Peter Crouch four well. one hat trick the perfect oh, hat trick. I saw, yeah. saw Peter Crouch that that evening. Did you? Yeah. Did he see you? He was uh, no, he didn't. Oh, I was a, I was a lot <laughs> further down. <laughs> oh, well, the, the other one I wanted to throw in, uh, I think Doyle will certainly remember this. November eighty nine, the first league game after the Michael Thomas goal, <clears throat> and we absolutely Ooh, battled yes. for twenty yeah. minutes. Did we miss the penalty early on? But then McMahon. It was live, live on the telly on a Sunday afternoon, but Marn thundered one in from 30 yards and then John Barnes scored an absolutely sublime free kick to make it 2-0. They, I think Alan Smith pulled one back, but we won 2-1. Mm. But that was, for a certain of those of us of a certain era, that was a big one, wasn't it? Well, funny enough, the season before is when they played them in the League Cup and they drew one all. That's one of the few games where I got in just after the game had started. Barnes and Rokos. Yeah, yeah, and... Arsenal were absolutely incredible, like genuinely, like brilliant. Bear in mind, this is the Liverpool team that had just the season before, you know, Slept really lost. Yeah. yeah, and I know they had one or two injuries. I think Barnes just made his comeback because he'd been injured. Barnes scored he? a great goal. Yeah. Rojas scored a great goal. And Arsenal, you were like, oh, going on Arsenal. Went to second Arsenal. replay at Villa Park. And a last minute winner from John Aldridge, John Aldridge I believe. Yeah, yeah. after we were behind. Yeah, so that was uh, that's another one that I remember. You have no idea what I'm talking about, do you? Well, I was I was literally uh, depending on what month of the year. November, the the November podcast caters for November all ages. All ages, Joseph or Joey, as I know, you know it does. I'm not. Yeah. I'm, I, I wasn't criticising you. You were enjoying talking about it. I, I, I was sitting enjoying. Listening. What about your worst Arsenal memory that doesn't involve 1989? Worst Ooh. Arsenal memory. The 4-4 did hurt. Yeah, but by then again, three-one in the FA Cup. That was particularly bad. The six that, three, was, six, that was after the six-three. About uh, four oh, days yeah, later, that, yeah. the four-one a couple of years ago under Rogers. When it became clear, like April fifteenth, oh, yeah. when it That's became clear that the, the um, yeah. Chang got sent off, didn't he? The yeah. wheels were just we were really? unraveling. The the, the 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 wheels the wheels were massively coming off. Um, Weird one. Uh, the four two in there, invincibles. Yeah, like we were winning two one at yeah, half time, yeah. and then just yeah. threw it away. That was the um, the great Henri goal, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. We turned Carragher upside down. Um, right, well, we'll finish off with... Um, <laughs> sorry, I, hope, that I, hope, <laughs> I hope Jamie doesn't listen to this. Um, right, we'll finish off with picking our team and um, making our predictions. So I think we can all agree on Adrian and goal. Defence, Theo, start with you. Do you think it's going to be Matip or Gomez? Matip with Gomez at right back. Really? Dan? I think... I th- I can see him doing that and maybe using Trent off the bench like he did in Istanbul. With Arsenal likely to have a bit more of an attacking impetus and thrust than our previous two league opponents, I would. it would not surprise me if he did go in like that, yeah. I think it'll be Joey Goey at centre-back and TTA at right-back. I agree with Ian Doyle. Yeah, I think it will be Joe Gomez. <laughs> <laughs> Joey Goey actually entertained me. I'll give you that. Um, in midfield, um, we'll start with you, Doyle, because of your... Oxlade Chamberlain Hunch. Well, I would have him play. I'd also have I'm just the real names, Fabinho, and I'd also have Henderson. So, which is a bit harsh on Wijnaldum, when I thought did quite well in the number six role or the defensive midfield role as old people call it. Um but I think, what do you think it that, will be? I think what do I think it will be? Yeah. I think it'll be Fabinho, Henderson, Wijnaldum. Okay. Dan. Um Fabinho definitely, Henderson definitely. Um I think he might go Chamberlain. But the more I think about it, the more, and particularly having heard what you said today, I think, I, th- I think he might go that way. Particularly, you know, I said, if he does pick a slightly more defensive back four. Was Chamberlain one of the options you were allowed to say? Because that's not his full so I, 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 I got told off for saying Chamberlain. Okay, right. I'm not a huge fan, but... I'll, I, Oxl- <laughs> Chamberlain isn't a straight red card. It's a yellow card. Anyway. Joe, you can go to HR after this, because it's, it's tantamount to, it's to, tantamount to bullying this, um, this podcast. <laughs> Theo, who do you think, who do you think um, that three is going to be? Fabinho, Henderson and Genie. And Man I'm just Alden. saying Genie to get yeah. that reaction. Oh, God, no. <laughs> um, right, OK, well, I have now, you've kind of convinced me that it's going to be Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain alongside Fabinho and Henderson. Mm. Can we call him Al? So, That's a new one. <sighs> Alloc. You can call, you can yeah, call it Alloc. Alloc, yeah. And the front three is the front three. Let's just do our predictions so we can end this fast. <laughs> right, Theo. 3-1. Done. 4-2. Four, 4-2. Two. Four, two. I think it'll be 3-1. I think it will be 3-1 as well. So you heard it here first. Right, nice one for listening. You probably won't bother tuning in again after today. <laughs> um, if you do want to tune in again, we're back on Monday. Hopefully to talk about Liverpool 3, Arsenal 1. See you then. Bye. Right.